Today's video is brought to you by Moshi, where you can save big by creating your own holiday gift set. Hey, it's Chris, and this is a video I've been wanting to make for a really long time, not necessarily because it's super exciting, but I rely on Apple Notes all the time. It's kind of an underrated app, and I know a lot of other people do as well, so I know that this is gonna be genuinely useful. Way back in the day, I used to be an Evernote user until it got old, and then I tried Google Keep, and I just didn't like it. And there's a ton of really great notes apps and I really need to make a video comparing them all. So thumbs up if that's something that you wanna see. But for whatever reason, I always find my way back to Apple Notes. The majority of these tips are gonna be useful for iOS users and especially for iPad users, but I've got a really great Apple Notes Mac tip to get us started. On the Mac, you can double click on a note to open it in its own window, which you probably already knew. But much more interesting you can go to window float note on top to keep that note visible on top of all your other windows. Yes, mind blowing, I know, because it's so useful if you're researching something or you have to reference something and you just don't wanna be switching back and forth between a bunch of windows. I like to keep my notes organized by pinning stuff I know I'll be referencing frequently to the top of my notes list. On iOS, just swipe right on a note and then hit the pin icon. On a Mac, you can right click and then click pin note. I think that's pretty common knowledge but one thing I like to do with my pinned notes is give each one a relevant emoji in the title to help them stand out at a glance since they all tend to really blend together and kind of look the same otherwise. So for instance, I have a pin note with the links that I add to each video and it's got the links emoji and I have a YouTube best practices note with a light bulb and I have a note about being original and that's got a pirate flag. It's a small thing, but honestly, I feel like it makes a pretty big difference for my overall notes experience. If you're gonna be using your Apple Pencil for note taking, you might not wanna be writing on just a blank piece of digital paper. If you want some guidelines or grids to work with, then you can choose from several options by hitting the share button. Yeah, the share button, which makes absolutely zero sense, but hit that share button and then tap on lines and grids and then simply select the option that you want. Now, if you just turn this on on a per note basis, then this is just gonna show up when you're handwriting something or sketching. It's not gonna show up when you're just typing. But if you prefer to have lines and grids on by default, you can make that happen by getting into the note settings within the iOS settings app and just turning that option on. On my iPhone in particular, I found it super useful to add a notes shortcut to the control center. So if I have an idea or I just need to get something down quickly, there's as little friction as possible. Also, when you create a notes shortcut here, you can deep press on it to quickly choose a note style or action, which is really great for scanning documents or making a checklist on the fly. And a big benefit to doing this is that you'll be able to create a note right on your lock screen. So to set this up, you're gonna go into settings and then control center and then customize controls, then add your notes shortcut and arrange it in the order that you want it to appear. Did you know that you can use Siri to create a new note? Just tell Siri, create a new note, which just like the control center shortcut, can be quicker than launching the app first. If you didn't know, you can set a password for individual notes to help keep them more secure or private. You probably knew that. I didn't know until recently though, that you can reset that password if you forget about it, which is something that happened to me recently. To do that, head over to settings, notes, password, password reset. Or even better, just turn on use face ID if that's an option because then you won't ever need to remember it. So if you're using an Apple Pencil in Apple Notes on your iPad, then notes can be a little bit confusing because Sometimes you get a ruler and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you can change the size of your tools and sometimes you can't. So let's talk about that. And honestly, this is super confusing. I don't even know why Apple set it up this way. If you're on the lock screen and you tap on the screen with your pencil, then you'll create an instant note, which is super convenient. You won't get a ruler, but you can give an extra tap on the pen, highlighter, or pencil, which will let you change the stroke width. And you're gonna get the same exact set of options if you're in a note and then tap on the pen icon. On the other hand, if you're in a note and then you tap on the plus icon and choose add sketch, you won't get to choose the width of your writing tools here. Oh, and now you'll get a ruler. And as long as you can see that ruler option there, you can access it quicker by just placing two fingers on the screen. Magic. Also, you can change whether tapping on the pencil in the lock screen always creates a new note or opens up the last viewed note 
in the Notes app settings. Also, when you're in a note, you can tap any blank area with the Apple Pencil to create a hand-drawn note or sketch right within your text. Now, I never know what's obvious to you guys and what isn't. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mention that you can create nested folders or subfolders. So if you ever wanted a folder within a folder, then just drag it there. Also, this seems pretty obvious to me, but just in case it's not, have you ever noticed that in full screen landscape mode on your iPad, your notes aren't centered? They're aligned to the left with a bunch of extra white space over to the right. Well, that white space is there for a reason. It's the perfect size to fit a floating app for multitasking. One thing that I really wish that the Apple Notes app had was tags. Like, I really love the way tags work in the Bear app, for instance, where it pretty much replaces folders. But just because it's not an official feature in the Apple Notes app doesn't mean you can't kind of use your own tag system anyways. Just go ahead and use a hashtag within your notes and then search for them. It's not as pretty, but it does work. To be awesome in Apple Notes, you have to know your shortcuts. The easiest way to find shortcuts in any iPad app is just to hold down the Command button for a few seconds, which will pop up a cheat sheet. One of my favorite keyboard shortcuts is Command plus Shift plus B, which will format text in the regular body style. I also really like the Command plus right or left bracket shortcut. Brackets, right? Is that what those are? But that lets you quickly indent your notes either right or left without having to tap on the screen. One keyboard shortcut that doesn't show up on the cheat sheet has to do with the use of the arrow keys on your keyboard. If you tap on a note from the notes list on the left side of your iPad, then you can use the up and down arrows to scroll through and preview your notes. Then just hit the right arrow whenever you wanna jump into a note and start editing. I normally think of the stuff that I create and store in the notes app as just stuff that only I'm gonna see, but it doesn't have to be that way. One of the best ways to share your notes is as a PDF, which is an option that you'll find in the share sheet. You can also easily add attachments to notes from other apps. So you can add a location from Maps or a website from Safari by clicking the share icon and then tapping add to notes and just choosing which note you wanna add it to. And if you do have a lot of images or videos or audio recordings attached to your notes, don't forget about the attachment browser, which is a little icon with four squares down in the bottom left corner of your app, which is way quicker for finding all those things. Okay, here's kind of a weird tip that really has nothing to do with the software, but it's simply to write bigger because you can. You're never gonna run out of space like you would if you were taking notes on a traditional sheet of paper. Sometimes for me, writing larger is just quicker and easier and writing smaller requires more time and concentration. I think it's a little bit faster. And if it's faster, then I might use it more. And if I use it more, that's okay because all my handwriting is searchable. Something else you're gonna wanna take note of is the make your own holiday gift set from today's sponsor, Moshi, which lets you save more the more you purchase. For instance, I got a gift set with the ultra slim hard shell case with a grippy textured back, a raised bezel that prevents screen scratches, and a wrist strap. It also came with the very cool Ion Glass Privacy Screen Protector, which shows my iPhone screen clearly from straight on, but protects against snoopers when viewed from the side. The super stylish Porto Q 5K portable battery with wireless charging was also included, the design of which was inspired by Danish furniture, which is cool, and it has a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity. Finally, my gift set also came with the iGlaze Slim hard shell case, which has military grade drop protection. To make your own Moshi gift set or to check out the products that I just mentioned, check out the links down in the description. So as a thank you for everybody that stuck around to the end of the video, here's a bonus tip. Try viewing your notes in landscape view. You'll thank me. It's a completely different experience. As always, thank you for watching today. I would love to know what your favorite new tip is that you learned in this video. So leave me a comment and let me know. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Daily Tech, spelled daily, T-E-K-K, in both of those places. And I'll catch you in the next video. Later.